those people that are still in that sin. Yeah. They enjoy that sin. They love it. Yeah. They want to change, but they're not making steps towards it. They're like, it's something I would love to change, but it's, I love that sin so much that it's kind of, even with yeah. God at this point. It, it's here to stay. Kind it's of. here to stay unless some miraculous divine intervention fixes that for me. And, and I would like to give my testimony on this. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King Podcast. I'm here with Emil, I'm here with Ivan, and today we're going to be speaking about addiction. Um, and before we get to the whole topic of, of the thing, maybe we can start with defining what an addiction is, right? Okay, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I think it's important to define what it is because the word gets thrown around a lot. You've got an addiction where uh, you're, phys- you're so physically, you, you know, if you would stop, and this happens with a lot of sub- substances, yeah. where if you would stop, you would have a physical reaction, you would deteriorate. Yeah. I think you, were men- you mentioned that you can actually die from certain withdrawals, like cold yeah. turkey, uh, from certain substances. Yeah, there's only two substances that can, you know, um, kill you if you quit cold turkey. Can. Um, that's benzodiazepines and alcohol. Um, yeah, it's so some, some things, if you quit like straight away, they can be physically damaging to the point that it can kill you. Yeah. And and so I guess generally when you talk about addiction, you talk about some physical dependence. Uh, maybe it's not that extreme where it'll yeah. kill you, but, uh, I think I'm not sure, but I've heard like with heroin addictions, there's, um, you know, like the nausea and, and a lot of sort of days of, of, uh, really struggling uh, with other types of um, substances. You've got depression. uh, And so uh, addiction primarily is biological, uh, physical. Uh, Ironically, um, with other types of addictions like um, pornography, which is not a substance, but uh, has uh, physical changes on you, which causes a dependence. Uh, People who quit uh, can get depression and yeah. I think that's got to do a lot with how uh, you know the dopamine system works yeah. and um, you know being overstimulated etc yeah. but I think it's important to talk about you know you we don't just throw the word around some people can I mean what's the difference between an addiction and just a habit a sinful yeah. habit yeah, yeah. Um, well for me, like the way I see it is a, an addiction is something that's uh, where you have a dependency on it, where a habit is just something that maybe you're just doing without maybe like a, a willful, like it's something that you're just doing unwill, like it's just something subconsciously, you're doing subconsciously. And that could be something that's also not good for you, uh, spiritually, physically, or mentally, and or mentally. Um, whereas I think addiction is more of a, a willful thing it could it, there, there could be many reasons why you're addicted to such wh- whatever that thing is whether it's a substance whether it's a certain act whether it's um, um like for example if it's pornography if it's um, alcoholism or if it's gambling or if it's um, an addiction to computer games it, it could range so th- there's of course there's all those things have a physiological change and also a psychological change but I think the thing that most of us neglect is the spiritual aspect of things, of what addiction does and how it can change us spiritually. Because we know that it, like, for example, for gambling, pornography, and, and also video games, they they change the way our reward system in our brain works. So uh, it, it kind of numbs us and, and things that we used to enjoy, they become less intense. It becomes like softer and softer to the point where we no longer enjoy those things. They don't bring us joy. We need to do something more extreme, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. So we need right. to gamble more. We need to watch more, more uh, different types of pornography, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, we get used to it. And it's the same thing with uh, dependency on uh, substances. Maybe you'd start off with a certain amount and then you need to grow that amount and keep growing and keep growing because your body like gets used to it. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to touch on that as yeah. well. Uh, so addiction being 
uh, I guess, the desire for a certain feeling, for a certain pleasure, uh, and becomes desensitized. Yeah. So as you mentioned, with pornography uh, and sexuality in general, mm. uh, it's it's about novelty. It's about, so, you, you know, you have nothing and then you get the first step and you enjoy it. And then after that, it, the it wears off. Yeah. And then you need to look for something different. That's yeah. how, I guess, we're, we're wired in that way. Uh, yeah. or, or it gets worn out the and and so you, so it's only something different that will re-stimulate you again and it's kind of going down that rabbit hole yeah uh and and progressively getting worse and worse and i think the destructive nature so i guess in this po- podcast we're a christian podcast yeah. so i want to talk about the uh uh you know being christian following christ um aspects of it which we'll get into um, yeah, absolutely. but but also before that, and just destruction that it does to you as a person. Mm. So, um, do you guys want to maybe interject with sort types of destructions and things that could happen when someone is addicted? Sure. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good point to recognize that the Bible doesn't give any space for these addictions, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like you could have God and your personal addictions, right? What the Bible wants to do is he wants to bring God into this um, and God will free you from these addictions, Mm -hmm. right? Placing God to be the center of of your life and practically putting that, you start to see those addictions fade away. Now, it's easier said than done. And there's a reason why we call them addictions, right? Because... In the Bible, it speaks about certain sins to be habitual, certain sins that can be tempting, but a natural human being is not overcome by them. That speaks about in Hebrew, right? You you fall into certain sins, but these are things that are common to a human being. And there are certain sins where the Bible calls a stronghold. Yeah. Right? So they've come into your life, and they're not coming to pass by, but they come and establish a base in your life, yeah. right? Whether it's, um, well, let's just say in our own minds, right? Uh, the devil's thrown a seed. That seed has been neglected. And as we spoke about addictions, right? You want, <clears throat> you don't have that same hit, right? You up your dosages, right? So what the devil does is once he throws that seed, we're no longer content with the seed. We want more to go back to those feelings. Yeah. So what he comes and he waters that seed. It grows, it grows, it grows, it grows. Now, the moment we find that as an addiction and we realize that it's no longer spiritually good for us and we want to get out of it, we come and we try and uproot a tree. Mm. Now, it's easy to uproot, take off a seed mm. that is maybe on, on the ground or maybe inside, or maybe has grown little. You just pick it up. The roots are very tiny, yeah. short, and, and it's an easy job. But then if we uh, <coughs> neglect those addictions, right? And, and sometimes it's not negligence. Sometimes we come to Christ with all these addictions that have been in our lives for years, sure. yeah. right? So what happens is we come to Christ and we read the Bible, and the Bible says you shouldn't have these things and the list comes you're like okay christ i'm gonna come back to you in a second i'm gonna go and uproot these trees in my life so i can be clean and i can be someone that you are pleased with but then as you grow in your faith you start to recognize that this is not your job to uproot these trees the same way jesus has forgiven you from your sins is the same way jesus is gonna deliver you from your sins so as we become more mature in Christ, we start to recognize that, God, I need your help in this. Yeah, You're the one that can help me with this. Yeah. And it's not a process over a, a day or two, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Christ becomes Lord over your life day by day. Yeah. And then it's a process when, of sanctification. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So th- that's that's where, where I'm at with when it yeah. comes to addiction. So just to touch on something you said, uh, when does it become... You know, we said it's a sin. When does it become a willful sin? Yeah. Well, that's a bit dangerous Mm. because in Hebrews chapter 10, it speaks about when we willfully sin. 
we are obviously bringing blasphemous things to the Spirit of God and to the Son of God. That's right. And the Bible says this, there's no longer repentance for that, but there is a fearful expectation of judgment mm -hmm. yeah. for God. So willful sin, I believe, is when God has delivered you from addiction, it's no longer an addiction, mm -hmm. and it's no longer has a tie on you. Now, we've experienced certain things that Christ has taken us out of, but sometimes occasionally we go back to it, but we know very well that this sin was not chasing us. Mm -hmm. We were chasing that sin. Addiction is you're in a place where that sin has tied you down and it's chasing you. It's your master. In, in Romans 6, it says in Christ, we're no longer in that. Our master is righteousness. So if Christ has taken you out of it and you want to go back, that is clearly your decision. And there is no influence that that sin has in your life. That's what I believe there's a willful sin. Yeah. Where that sin is no longer has any influence on you, yet you, you choose. choose. Yeah. yeah. So when I was thinking about this, I thought it's not that clear between being addicted, physically addicted, or being overcome by an actual weakness. Mm. And I actually think that maybe those two things are different to willingly, you know, I want to go to these things because... So uh, so I'm not sure if you un understand what I mean, but you could be an addicted to something, so you've got that physical addiction, and that's mm -hmm. why maybe you keep going to that. But there's also... Uh, you're not addicted to it. Maybe it's something... Uh, there's no physical um, grab on you. But over time, something happens, just like King David. You know, he sinned. So it was a weakness that was exposed. And he went and he, he, he went for that weakness. And I actually think those two things are in the same category. And it's actually separate from willful sin. Willful sin is... Uh, I guess in your mind, you're set, you know, you've determined this is what you want. So what, okay, what do you Like guys... a premeditated... Yeah, it's thing. like, I, I don't want to... I think about it with, with me when I was younger, I, I used to have this mindset of, I know I used, to do, I used to do something wrong and I would take advantage of the forgiveness of God and there was no, um, like, there was no feeling of wanting guilt. to there was no guilt there was no feeling of wanting to turn away there was no idea of turning away it was i want to do these sins because i want to do it and 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 god is going to forgive me for it because that's what the bible says that's what i was taught at church that is willful sin that is um heading for destruction that is going to if i had continued in that mindset i would be going on my way to hell but luckily God actually delivered me from that. He chased after me and he showed me that it's not the right way. And then I got it. Mm. And so sometimes we fall under a weakness, but we, it's not willful. We, we don't approve of it. Yeah. So wouldn't you say that having that weakness is a sign that there is an influence still definitely yeah 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 that's yeah. what and, and i think we connect a lot in both of our answers because i believe personally is that this sin has no ties with you mm -hmm. has no influence whatsoever but you choose to go to that right you know Can you give an example of what that sin would look like like what like a scenario for example like for example personally mm -hmm. um i became a christian and very early on i stopped swearing because mm -hmm. swearing was not a problem for me, even though every second word was a swear word. But then when I became a Christian, like it was so easy to get rid of, personally speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go and swear now, it's like it's very evident that I'm choosing to swear. Mm -hmm. There is no no scenario for me to swear because I've been a Christian for 15 years. <clears throat> I've been angry many times. I've mm -hmm. been frustrated many times. I've been in a lot of traffic, you know, slow traffic, mm -hmm. but never did it enter my mind to swear. I That's me. I never saw swearing as an addiction. I saw it more of it as a habit. 
a habit, sinful it's habit. Because yeah. um, I don't really enjoy. It's not like yes, I'm having so much fun saying the f word or this. No, it's it's more of like I just because I'm in that environment before, not now. Mm. Uh, I was used to speaking that a certain way. Yeah. I was free with my words and I was careless with my tongue, and I used to say things that were mm. like. Well, curses. Yeah, the Bible um, warns a lot yeah. of what you know with yeah. what you say. Yeah, it wasn't something an addiction. It was a habit. It was it was okay. a sinful habit. Yeah. Um, now, when I was still in my transition to being a Christian, I remember it was a long, long, long time ago. I was in the car with you, and I was driving, and I hit something, and I said, "Oh, f word." I was. It, I wasn't like consciously saying it it was a subconscious habit of mine from my who i was before and i didn't realize i said until you point out you said emil you just said the f word i said no i didn't you're like yeah you did I'm i had like, a, i had a I very did? similar experience yeah, you did yeah. i'm like i didn't realize <laughs> i had a very similar experience i didn't even realize and someone picked and then i was new like maybe one year yeah. uh, into committing and then, and then it was just the ones and it was strange because Physically, I wasn't feeling good. Like I was feeling a bit sick, um, so I wasn't mm. feeling hundred percent. And yeah. that's, I guess, when the habit comes out as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's and, not, and before it's not that, I would self. never like in that year, I would never swear. Mm. Yeah. So I guess it just comes out sometimes out of weakness and habit. Yeah. But uh, similar experience to what Martin was saying. Um, but w for me, it was with cigarettes. Yeah. So uh, I used to smoke in high school, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I left high school and I would still not smoke as much because of the influence of the people. But there was a time where uh, I committed my life and it was, that's it. And so I haven't, you know, maybe it was maybe a two year transition, but then after that point, I had not touched a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And then part of it is the influence of the people around me. So not having people around me didn't expose that weakness. Yeah. Um, but growing and coming closer to God and strengthening in that part, later on, people did come around me who did smoke. And, and that temptation was almost there. Mm -hmm. But the strength of the closeness to God and knowing how far I've gone with God um, really just gave me the strength to, to just not, not fall for it um so that that was that's a positive story in my life yeah. there's there's some negative ones <laughs> well in sharing all that it's, it's obviously showing that every christian comes with their own addiction mm. to christ and the idea is that we're all addicts in one way or another yeah um it could be in you know alcohol cigarettes drugs sin sin yeah certain sins are very addictive Mm. Um, I think there needs to be a place of grace mm. for people that are on their journey compared to the people that have, for example, have already accomplished that, have already finished that journey in a certain way. Um, and I see Absolutely. sometimes like for a, per for a person be like, oh, you know, you got to stop drinking and that's bad for you. And today needs to be the day. Right. Uh, but you're like, well, I know your history. You struggled in that. I wish you gave that same example to yourself mm. and I wish you lived that example, right? Uh, Live that advice. Addiction takes time, right? Sometimes, miraculously, God comes mm. and I've seen a lot of testimonies of like, I used to be deep in that and in a day, all gone. I'm a new person, right? And there are people that are like, well, that took me six months. That took me a year. Finally, I have my victory in Christ. We need to celebrate both. And we need to appreciate both. Um, the people that come with that mindset that you're addicted to this, today you got to stop. It'd be easy, right? That'd be great. Sometimes it does happen. Yeah, sometimes. But it's that's, very rare. It's usually yeah. a step-by-step -step journey. That's, that's what I'm saying. There are times where people miraculously get rid of it. <clears throat> Fair enough. But we need to be gracious on the majority Absolutely. where they take time. Yeah. And we need to be patient. We need to hold them accountable. We need to walk with them through that journey. Yeah. Um, I think that's important in the church. I think you as a father can see that perfect example in your sons, right? 
Because you have yeah. two boys. They're not addicted, but... No, 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 yeah. no, no. As in, <laughs> two young kids, obviously, they're not going to be addicted. <laughs> no, no. But, they, for example, even in their schoolwork, right? Are they both the same exactly in how they progress in school? No. Wouldn't there be differences? Different. Yeah. So, just like for two boys that come from the same parents, mm. right? We have a case-by-case basis for us as well. Yeah. Somebody could learn about their addiction and change it, start changing and change it much faster than somebody else and you know vice versa so i think it's the same thing with uh, getting rid of our sins getting rid of our our journey with christ how fast we progress in our christianity it's a case-by-case basis and it's the same thing with um with our sins and um you know the question was was which is um i'm a christian i believe in christ but i have this sin in my life am i going to heaven am i going to hell i can't answer that it's a case by case basis. I don't know your heart. I don't know what's going on in your life. Based on what you told me, I can make some assumptions, but that's all they are. And that's not fair to condemn someone based on assumptions. So that's why I usually leave it as a blank thing and say, look, man, it's oh, sister, brother, it's it's between you and God. I can't decide. But this is something you should be careful about, of course. Yeah. Because it can affect your salvation. I'm not swing, saying it is. It can swing either way. Yes. Yeah. And it's and, a case by case basis. And and that's the point, like to me, when I get when I get tackled by these questions, mm. like I've got that certain addiction, right? Um, I'm in Christ. I really hate it. I want to get rid of it. I want to yeah. live free for Christ. To me, I'm like, since you're heading in the right direction, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You shouldn't be questioning who you are in Christ. Yeah. I'm talking about but, mostly about those people that are still in that sin. Yeah. They enjoy that sin. They love it. Yeah. They want to change, but they're not making steps towards it. They're like, it's something I would love to change, but it's, I love that sin so much that it's kind of, even with yeah. God at this point. It, it's here to stay. Kind it's of. here to stay unless some miraculous divine intervention fixes that for me. And, and I would like to give my testimony on this, mm. this specific scenario. Because I loved cigarettes so much. So, so much. You know that. The way you're talking about it. No, I really love cigarettes. Like, to the point where I said to God, I will never quit. Unless you make it so that I'm literally dying, like, from smoking. Like, literally, I'm dying even though there's nothing wrong with me. I was like, but please make it so that there's nothing actually wrong with me. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, I (laughs) I was smoking my cigarette, and then out of nowhere, I felt like I was having a heart attack. I was messaging my friends, my mother and everyone. Like, I think I even messaged you, man. I care about you. It's just like, uh, you know, I love you, man. You're my brother. Um, pretty much my last goodbyes type thing because I thought I was dying. Turns out I wasn't. There was nothing wrong with me. It was all mental. I had to quit cigarettes. Every time I put a cigarette in my, on my lips, I take one one little breath. I feel like I am dying. Like my heart is going to explode. I can't breathe. I can't think. Like pretty much an anxiety attack. Like, I feel like I'm going to die. Even though there's nothing wrong with me. This is, I'm perfectly healthy. I went to the doctor, checked my heart, checked everything. Perfectly fine. It's all in your head. And it's exactly what I wish for. And because of that, I couldn't smoke. And in, in, from one, in one week, I think I had one cigarette in one week. And after that, I did not have a cigarette for, I believe it was five, four, four or five years. I did not touch cigarettes or any, any like smoking. Like... Because I I couldn't. And then after that, I, I I had a cigarette and I was like, just to try it. And I was like, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like it anymore. And I'm, I just don't want it anymore. I, don't want, I want it out of my life. I put it to the side. I said, I'm no longer in love with this. It's no longer my master. And it's, it wasn't something I could do or learn. I, I, I told that to God. I said, God, I'm putting this out here. I hate this. I hate this sin, but I love it. I hate that I love it. I love you more, but this is got root, the roots are impossible for me to take out of my life. Impossible. Yeah. I can't imagine my life without a cigarette in my hand. If I go to a restaurant after I eat, I need to like. I can't imagine it, like having a meal and then finishing that meal and not having a cigarette. I can't imagine that's it. something pre- preposterous to me. But he changed my mindset. He made me a new person. Now I can't imagine having a cigarette after a meal. It's something weird to me. Yeah. It's like why would I smoke? I'm buying expensive perfumes to smell nice and then I'm ruining it. That doesn't make sense to me. It's illogical. Where before it was illogical for me to, to not smoke. Mm-hmm. So, so that's a good testimony because a lot of people, it's all about 
my will, my will, my will. And look, there's a lot of things that we can accomplish with mm. our will. Yeah. But then there are times where you come to the road, to the end of the road, and you're like, God, I need you, right? And this is the amazing thing about Christianity, is that God is here to help. He is compassionate, He is gracious, and He's here to help <coughs> you come out of it. And, and I think sometimes it takes that discipline. Of you know God disciplines those that he that he loves. Um, for, for, for when I was listening to your story, it's a kind of a discipline. You know something uh, is happening to you. To me, is that's a bit of God's discipline. And for my own experiences, uh, it's it's where your heart is at. If I do something wrong and I know that I should have known better to not do it, then I will accept God's discipline. Yeah. Because discipline gets us through to my body. As Paul says, you know, I beat my body so mm. that it's in submission. And sometimes that we, you know, no one wants to, as, as a father, you discipline your children when, you know, they do something wrong. You, you know you have to do it. But I don't think any father enjoys doing it. No. Right. Um, no one just says, yeah, that was, that was so good. I, I wanted to inflict pain, you know, emotional pain. Even physical pain, Assyrians, you know, yeah, Iraqi people. Middle East. <laughs> the, the slipper. <laughs> but um, no, I don't think, no one enjoys doing it. Uh, but it's just because of what we are, our broken nature, yes. um, addiction. So discipline helped me a lot. But as you say, it's a case-by-case -case basis. And and the, the foundation is will, is the willfulness. Yeah. Do you not care about it? Or do you, like you're saying, I hate it, but I can't stop it. I love it. I hate yeah. it. I hate that I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a very good point, is that you, God's going to discipline you. The process is not going to be enjoyable. No. Right? It's going to mm -hmm. be very difficult. Yeah. But the end result is what you're looking for. Yeah. Amen. Right? Like you start a marathon... No one's going to enjoy this, this run. Yes. But you're going to be enjoying crossing that line and you're like, I've accomplished it. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Yeah. Here is we're doing it in the grace of God. Amen. Like this is the amazing thing that we have. We have God in our lives. His spirit is the person yeah. who's convicting us daily of these things and saying, okay, I've got a way out for you. Yeah. Are you ready to go through it? Yeah. Let's do it together. Just on that, there's an Australian cricketer. He's got a writing in Arabic. He's, he's Aussie, but he's got writing in Arabic. Yeah. And it says, the pain of discipline is not like the pain of disappointment. Oh, and that's, sure. that's, that's a really good, that's you know, nice. obviously, you know, he's a cricketer. He has to train and it's painful to get up 5 a.m. in the cold. You know, cricket balls are like rocks, <laughs> you know, you've got yeah. cold fingers. Yeah. And, but... That pain is not like the pain of you could have won the game, but you, you lost, you're disappointed. Yeah. And, and I think addiction is like that a lot. I, I think a lot of the times we just have to just sometimes just surrender. Because sometimes our willpower is definitely not enough, mm. especially when it comes to addictions that have taken a stronghold in us and become a part of who we are. And that is sometimes the case. They become our personality. They become... Um, something engraved engraved in us. So, so what we do is we we surrender our will, our our person to God, and we lay everything bare and say, God, here I am. I am being still and knowing that you are my Lord, you are my God, and I am just letting your will be done in my life, Great. whatever it is. And I surrender my addiction to you. I surrender my pain. I surrender my worries. I surrender my my habits, my, my weakness, I put it before you, Lord. And I say, Lord, strengthen me so I can serve you better. And I do it with a heart that's truly, truly submissive and, and wanting to change because we, I love God. I, I love my sin, but I hate that I love my sin and I want to love God more. And I say, God, help me. I want to love you more. And, and if you ask that of, of, of your father in heaven, would you not give it? He would give it. Right? Amen. Absolutely. That's... First and foremost, it's his desire. Absolutely. Like, if you think about it, the reason why we're going through all this is because that's God's desire. Mm -hmm. So God's God's going to fulfill his desire. Absolutely. Um, any last point you guys want to share? I know there's much more to talk oh, this about. Heaps, this yeah. topic is very... Definitely. Yeah, Yeah. so I think it, it comes down, uh, we all touched on it, it's mm -hmm. your heart. Yes. It's how much you want it. Now, 
at the same time, if you're not really, if your heart's not in it, God knows that, and it swings the other way. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, you are. Let's let's go to the fact. You are going to destruction if yeah. your heart is not in it. If you don't want to submit, I know you, there's weaknesses. Yes, you fall. You know, a uh, righteous man falls seven times, but yeah. uh, you know, he, it's a righteous man falls. Yeah. Right. So he's a good man, but it comes down to your heart. Um, and yeah. so I just want to encourage anyone, if you're going through addictions, as Emil couldn't have said it better, uh, you know, you give it, you submit it to God, and, yeah. and won't, won't God answer? He will answer. He will. Even, yeah. even if it's a sin that you really care about, yeah. if you just want God to change that, He will. If you truly, truly want change, there will be change. If you don't want change, you're just saying that to appear as a Christian, then uh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, personally, for me, it's every time I found myself addicted to something, I'm like, what am I lacking in my satisfaction in God that I am substituting Substitute it with that, this? Yeah. So yeah. once I restore my satisfaction in God, I find that this is no longer appealing to me. Therefore, I'm just going to be with God. Just to quickly so. interject, uh, when we talked about gaming and uh, those sorts of addictions, a lot of the time it's to hide they they go into that because mm. it's to actually hide something else. Mm. Yeah. So uh, as you're saying, you know, if you're filled with God, then it's, it's hard for anything else to get in. Yeah, and and there's a lot of examples in the Bible where it speaks about my joy overflows, I have peace in the Lord, and so on. So it, it shows that God can f- physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically satisfy you. Because he created you and he is there to complete you. So if we find our satisfaction in Christ, I think it just makes it much easier for us to put our hand there and say, no, I don't want this cigarette. I don't want this drug. I don't want this alcohol. I don't want to use my phone, my laptop, my computer to, you know, satisfy myself sexually, right? With pornography and so on. I don't need any of that because I'm satisfied in Christ. I think what we need is prayer. That's what we lack sometimes. And that's what drives us to these things. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Take care. Take care. God bless.